As Jesus and his disciples crossed the big lake we know as the Sea of Galilee, they found themselves ashore on foreign soil. They were in the region known as the Decapolis, a league of 10 important cities. Gerasa, one of the closest cities to Jesus' dock, was a city decadent in Roman fashion and culture, and according to Erdman's, profited from being on the lucrative spice and perfume trade routes. So what is Jesus doing near this place, far from Israel and God's covenant people? Well, unlike our reluctant prophet Jonah, who when tasked to go on an international mission, preferred being thrown into the sea to participating in God's outreach, Jesus willingly picks up God's global agenda. Jesus already had a multinational following. You may have noticed back in chapter three that Jesus already had followers from Tyre and Sidon, those faraway cities. His reputation is already reaching beyond Israel's borders. You see, God is rescuing folks by the droves. Mark 5, 1 through 20. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by a legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. Boat miles, Gentiles, and pig piles, oh my! Remember how Jesus is on a spiritual offensive of sort? He's binding the strong men and setting the prisoners free. He's coming against the spiritual authorities that not only keep Israel in captivity, but the world. Jesus is on a global Exodus style rescue op. Did you notice what this legion of demons did to this man? They isolated him. They drove him out to places where only the dead dwelt. He was carrying his shackles with him and he was cutting himself with stones. As Westerners, we may not readily say that people who feel isolated, ostracized, or prone to self-harm are possessed with demons, but Mark challenges us to name spiritual oppression where the contours match. Jesus crosses international borders just to free this man from his spiritual oppressors. And notice what he told him to do, to go home to his family, to his friends, and to tell them what the Lord has done, that God has had mercy. When we are rescued by Jesus, we are rescued from our isolation. We are restored into community and we share our Exodus stories and it's contagious. This former demoniac, defined by his literal host of issues, is now participating in the work of God. Sharon Dowd observes, by preaching, he participates in the activity of Jesus and his disciples, becoming the one who makes the deeds of the Lord known among the Gentiles. Dowd hears echoes of the global hope we have in the prophet Isaiah. In that day, you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. You see, Isaiah's new Exodus hope ultimately leads to the hope of a new heaven and new earth. His prophecy closes with people from all over the globe streaming into Jerusalem to see the glory of the Lord. 
And on the day that Jesus rescued this man from demonic despair, he became one of those people from distant shores that saw and responded to the glory of the Lord. In Mark, we are invited to see our personal narratives of spiritual liberation as part of the tapestry of God's global rescue operation. Jesus comes to set you free and tell the world. Are you in? Thank you.